Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to start looking at the Color Balance RGB module. The Color Balance RGB module was introduced in version 3.6 of Dark Table and it's the new way to color grade your image, a one-stop shop for all color grading and adjustments. Now the uh, fine manual says that the module is not suitable for beginners with no prior knowledge of color theory, who might want to stick to the global chroma and global vibrance settings until they have a good understanding of the dimensions of colors. Well, that's it. Very short series. We don't need to use this module. Nah, we're going to try our best. So all joking aside, today's episode is going to cover some basics. First, we're going to go through the vector scope. And to get to the vector scope, you cycle through this button here, which will take you to the waveform first, and then vector scope. The vector scope shows chromaticity without regard to either lightness or spatial data. That's verbatim from the user manual. What it means is that it shows the color and the lighter the color is represented, the more there is of it in the image. The distance from the center represent chroma and the angle represent hue. Now we're going to go through all of those definitions in a bit so it might all become clearer once we do that, but bear with me now. So the graph represents color volume in the image, as in how much of a certain color is represented in the image by lightness. More frequently used colors in the image are lighter in tones here. You can represent it either in logarithmic mode or in linear mode. And you can use it to describe the image either in, and you'll excuse me if I mispronounce this, CLUV or GZ, AZ, BZ color space. You can change it by clicking on this button here. And I'm certainly not going to try to understand the difference between the color spaces, and I don't think interesting to the level of these uh, videos. But the user manual says that the CLUV graph is faster to calculate and it's a well-known standard. JZ, AZ and BZ may be more perceptually accurate. Okay. I don't see how it actually takes longer to calculate. But this one is supposed to be Oh, no, this is the accurate one, more accurate one. And this is the faster one, the CLUV. Fair enough. And this ring here represents the maximum chroma of each hue. Okay, we're going to move to color dimensions, definitions, and we'll see if that makes it all clearer or not. The first dimension is hue. And let's read from the user manual. An attribute of visual perception in which an area appears to be similar to one of the colors red, yellow, green or blue, or to a combination of adjacent pairs of these colors considered in a closed ring. Okay, so if you imagine a circle with the colors yellow, green, blue and red on it, with combinations of them in between, hue is where that color falls on that circle. So it's the closest match of that color on the circle of pure and or saturated colors known as the color wheel. So this one will be the closest combination between green and blue. Here the closest to green, green and red, to red, to red and yellow, and so on and so forth. Next we have luminance represented on those bars. Again, I'll read from the manual. The density of luminous intensity with respect to a projected area in a specified direction at a specified point on a real or imaginary surface. 
So in rough terms, luminance is the amount of light that is reflected or projected from an area. As we can see here, from complete dark to very light. However, what's the difference between luminance and lightness? Because if you just look at it, it looks like it's doing exactly the same. And yeah. So the lightness, quoting again from the manual, is the brightness of an area judged relative to the brightness of a similarly illuminated area that appears to be white or highly transmitting. Okay. Lightness is the perceptual non-linear homologue of luminance, which, and it is roughly equal to the cubic root of luminance y. So they are directly related, except this one is the perceived one, and it is non-linear, and this one is linear. Chroma. Chroma is the colorfulness of an area judged as a proportion of the brightness of a similarly illuminated area that appears gray, white, or highly transmitting. It's so difficult to describe these things using and other terms because I'm afraid of using terms that mean something different. For instance, I want to say here that it's the perceived intensity of a color compared to a gray area, but intensity might have a different meaning. I'm not an expert on color science, but I wonder if that gets the message across. It's, it's how colorful of the strength Maybe that's a good one. The strength of the color compared to a area of the same lightness but gray. And it's directly evident why there is a need to actually study those and see what they mean about it. Because when I wanted to describe chroma, the first word that came to my mind is saturation. But saturation is a completely different concept. Saturation says it's the colorfulness of an area judged in proportion to its brightness. And brightness is defined as an attribute of visual perception according to which an area appears to emit, transmit, or reflect more or less light. So at least brightness means exactly what we think it means. It's our visual perception of how much light is reflected, emitted, or transmitted by an area. Okay, so let's go back to saturation. What was the definition again? Colorfulness of an area judged in proportion to its brightness. So it's the perceived concentration of color as opposed to white light and the light coming from an area. And I'm sure I'm misusing the word color here but I'm trying to use my own words and it's very difficult to not stray from the strict definitions. The last one we have is brilliance and it's defined as the brightness of an area judged relative to the brightness of its surroundings. Okay, so it's a function of the brightness but it's a comparison with its surrounding area as opposed to a absolute value. And here we have two helpful charts that displays how the chroma, lightness, saturation, brightness change from minus one to one. I'm not sure how it is up as well. Is it from minus one to one? Not very clear on the chart. It's all a lot to digest. To be honest, I'm not sure if I understand all of them as well as I should. Most of the definitions seems to be fleeting in my mind until now. So I understand it when I read it and then I find it difficult to re-explain it once I think about it again. It helped to go through it, what is it, for the umpteenth time to do this video. But I think the most important part is going to be to understand how we can use it to change the photo that we're working on. And these kind of charts or images or whatever you want to call them are quite helpful because you have a visual representation of what you are changing by changing that value. The same goes for here. I think that's enough background for now. 
I'm not even sure if I've missed something. So I'm going to give you all a chance to post your corrections or suggestions or additions or anything that you find useful. And if there is anything to add, I'll add it at the start of the next video. So next time we'll start with the module controls. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.